This is the East Hills Outdoors Jungle Explorer Hammock. If you're interested in hearing more about it, keep watching. All right, before I begin, I just want to declare that this hammock was sent to me by the people at East Hills Outdoors. I did not pay for it, but of course I'm not getting anything in the way of compensation for the making of this video, other than I get to keep the hammock, I guess. Uh, okay, a couple of things I want to say right up front. First off, this will be a preview video. The hammock arrived to me kind of late in the season, much too late for me to get out and do any overnights or even spend any amount of time hanging in it because it's cold. Right now, it's late November, and uh, yeah, I don't have an underquilt that I could spend the night in. I guess I could put a pad inside of it, but uh, uh, no, you know what? It's, it's enough, I think, to give you a preview. I'll go over the tent, I'll go over its pros and cons, and of course, I'll put all the information that I have, including the specifications for the tent and where you can pick one up if you'd like. I'll put that all in the video description below. So this is the second hammock that East Hills Outdoors sent to me for a review. And uh, here's my first comment on these hammocks. They are a budget hammock. They are an entry-level hammock. If you're already an experienced hammocker, this is not for you. This is for someone who's trying to decide whether or not they want to get into hammocking and uh, they need to test out a few hammocks before they know what they like. And what's nice about these, these uh packages is that everything is together. You get your hammock, your tree straps. This has a bug net, as you'll see in a moment, and it has a tarp. So it's an all-in-one package at a very reasonable price. You may decide that you want to upgrade at some point in the future, and you may decide this is going to suit your needs for the hammock camping that you do do. So as I mentioned, this is the second hammock. The first one I had had an integrated bug neck that could not be totally removed from the hammock. This one has a bug neck that can be totally zipped off and that is a huge advantage to me. Uh, it's a much better bug neck system and I'll explain as I get going. But let me just go over a few of the specifications and then we'll take a walk around of the hammock and I'll get a little bit more detailed on some of the finer points of the hammock. Some of the things I think are great additions or great design in features and some of the things that I think need to be improved as well. Okay, for to start with, this is a 10 foot long, 118 by, referring to my notes, 79 inch hammock or a three meter by two meter hammock. In other words, it, it is a double. And you can tell that when you look at it because it's what they call a paneled hammock. There's a large center panel and then two additional panels on each side to give you the width for a double hammock. Personally, I prefer a double hammock over a single hammock because it gives me more to work with in terms of being able to angle myself and get a flatter lay in the hammock. It does mean there's some floppy material left over, but I would sooner have a little bit of slack in the sides than not enough room to get that diagonal lay to lay flat in the hammock. So I appreciate that this is a double hammock. It's also rated at a 600 pound capacity. That doesn't mean two people should get in it, because I've never found any hammock comfortable for two people to get in at the same time, to be quite honest, other than maybe short periods of time. It is made of a rip stop nylon, so it is quite strong. Parachute nylon is the way they describe it. It does come with tree straps, as I mentioned. It does come with carabiners. It's a gathered end style, so there is a loop running through the gathered end attaching to the carabiners. And the hammock straps, as you see, or the tree straps, are the ones that have the loops on them so that you can pick specific distances apart. It doesn't give you infinite variability, but pretty close to it. It was pretty easy to set up when you get a little practice with it. Okay, so what I think I'll do now is I will take you in and get a closer look at the hammock. We're going to talk about the tarp separately because I have more to say about the tarp, honestly, than I do about the hammock. All right, so I have the tarp set up in porch mode so that as we approach the hammock, you'll be able to see the setup and some of the features. Of course, I would lower this side down if I was expecting inclement weather. The tarp is set up in diamond for formation. It did not come set up for that. It came to be set up in a, in a square formation, but in square formation, it is not long enough. Uh, it, well, it comes pretty much to where the carabiners are on either side. So if you want to get the the overhang that you need for protection from the rain, you need to set it up in diamond formation. So that's one of my first comments about the tarp. But let's get, take a look at the hammock as we go in. So you can see it is a gathered end hammock with a heavy nylon rope. 
carabiners, good quality carabiners, tree straps with multiple loops that you can adjust the length of, get quite a good distance between trees. You can see that there is a bug net, nice fine light bug net, sure to stop just about anything, at least anything we have in our area. Now this being a jungle style hammock, it is held up off of the hammock with uh, bungee cords. So there are bungee cords included with the hammock that allow you to uh, get the, the bug net up off of you. There are three loops parallel, like two sets or three sets of two loops, I guess you might say, that you would run your bug net through. And you can see it's quite set quite a good distance up off of the hammock. Now, if you want to get even more openness to the bug net, you could run a stick of some type with some notches in it to create a spreader bar and uh, would give you a little bit more room inside. Be honest, once you get inside of this hammock, there's lots of room and a good distance above your face to the top of the bug net. Inside, let's see if I can get in closer here. Inside of the bug net, so that little is actually inside, are a couple of uh, clips on each side that allow you to hang, well, whatever it is you want to hang, I guess anything from a flashlight uh, to uh, where you want to put your uh, valuables bag or whatever. And that is repeated at this end. Another pair of clips like this here. And I, let's see if I can show you where the zipper come, is, all right. So it's an overlapping zipper. So there's actually two zippers, a gray one that goes around one end of the hammock, and you can designate either one, foot end, head end, it's up to you, but it does allow you to distinguish when you set the hammock up, if you want to use the gray as the head, or the black as the head, either one. And they have overlapping uh, zippers, as I mentioned, by about uh, four inches. And so that gives you enough protection so bugs aren't going to get in around the ends of the zippers. And as I mentioned, you can go right around the hammock and you can take the bug net half off if that's what you want to do. Uh, if it's a nice evening, cool enough, the bugs aren't out. It's plenty cold enough now, there's no bugs. But uh, yeah, it allows you to go all, or all the way off and take and stow it away. Or even leave it home if you want to save a few extra ounces. Let's see if we can go to this end. Again, the same thing, gathered in, heavy nylon cord, carabiner, and tree straps. Now, let's talk about the tarp. I'm going to show you the way I have it set up. Uh, this is not the way that East Hills Outdoors had intended to be set up. But uh, yeah, let's start with that. I'll show you in a minute what came with it, but I have it set up on a ridgeline. I like using ridgelines with tarps, and I'm using my own carabiners and Prusik nuts to get the, the extension. I can adjust it more easily with the Prusik nut and carabiners. And uh, yeah, so that's what I have set up. And I'm also on the corners, I'll get down, go down to this corner. Replaced the lines, which I, as I mentioned, I will show you in a second, with my own cord. So this is two millimeter uh, parachute cord that's reflective in nature. It's a nice cord to have for this type of an arrangement. And I just have it tied to the tree here at a height that I can show you everything underneath. Okay, what can I say about the tarp? The tarp is not ripstop nylon. Uh, I'm going to give you the specs. I, it's a polyester tarp. I, I'm, I'll give you the specs and everything, but I'm just going to pass my comments on it. If you look underside, I'm not sure how well this is showing up. It's silvered or silverized or it's not metallic so much. It's just got a silver color to the inside of the tarp. Uh, it will provide more light underneath, I guess, especially if you have your flashlight in the evening. It will provide that little bit of extra light. Uh, my comments on this were is that uh, I didn't think it was as good a quality as the one that came with the first East Hills Outdoor hammock. Uh, but at the same time, it's functional. It's waterproof. It is seam sealed. Let's see if I can get you a look at that. It is seam sealed, so there's no reason to think that this will leak. I will tell you this. It stinks. There is a chemical smell on this that I have had it out a few times. It's been well air aired out, but every time I take it out of the patch, or out of the package, out of the stuff sack, it still has that smell on it. I expect it will eventually wear off, but when you first get it, you're going to be, well, at least I was, quite put off by the chemical smell of the tarp. Uh, 
Yeah, I didn't like the fact that it wasn't ripstop nylon, but that's not the end of the world because it's all about quality, I guess, of construction. And as you can see, it does have a ribbon going along the edges. The tie out points are nicely reinforced. You can see the extra material on the inside. And again, there's no reason to think that this won't hold up for a long period of time. But then again, that's what extended testing is about. As you can see, there is a midpoint tie out on each side. Now, if I use this the way that it was packaged when it came from East Hills Outdoor, this would have been the, the attachment point to the trees. And I, what I'm doing now is I'm using corner tie outs as attachment points, but it's nice that I have that option. So I can set this up in square formation or diamond formation as I have it right now. Okay, what I want to do is take a moment to show you a couple of the things that came with this tarp and as well as again show you a couple of the modifications I made. Okay, uh, I know it's coming off sounding negative, my thoughts on the tarp itself. And I will be honest, I was a little disappointed when it first arrived, the tarp and hammock. Not with the hammock, the hammock is, meets the quality I expected from it. It's very much like the original hammock that I got from East Hills Outdoors in terms of quality of construction and design. Um, actually, it's a nicer hammock because it's a double wide hammock because it has a fully removable uh, bug net which is a really nice feature a lot more room inside of the hammock everything else is pretty much the same as the original hammock it was the tarp that I wasn't happy, happy with. So I reached back to East Hill Outdoors and I said, why did you take a, in my mind, a step backwards in the tarp? They assured me the tarp was of equal quality to the one that came with the first hammock, which was a ripstop nylon, waterproof ripstop nylon. But they said, this is lighter. Okay. I laid them on the scales. Yes, it is by about three ounces. So not so much lighter that that was a justifiable argument to me. You know what, I can put up with, or not so much put up, I can accept that and I will accept that it's a good tarp. I'm not, I'm not denying that at all. What really bothered me was the accessories that came with the tarp. So this is the tent stake. They are steel tent stakes, the ones you find on the most entry level of tents you might get at a big box store that you know you're only going to use a couple times and likely isn't waterproof so you let the kids play in it during good weather. Steel tent pegs like this. Now I replaced them. I had some inexpensive aluminum uh, tri-stakes that I picked up off of AliExpress. They're cheap. You buy them by a dozen and you have them on hand and I was glad I did because that's what I've done. I've replaced the tent stakes uh, with those much better quality tent stakes than they had. The other item was the tie-out points. Uh, yeah, okay. So here's what came with the hammock. This is again pretty much identical line. I'll bring you some close-ups. Pretty much an identical line you're going to find on entry-level tents again from big box stores with the same type of an adjustment. Let me bring this in. You familiar with those? That type of a line tightener. Now, you may be happy with those and maybe uh, that's all you need, but this is intended to be held at the stake by that loop and then you pull upwards on that line adjustment to get the tautness you want on the line. Um, they work. I'm not going to say that they don't. I find them a little frustrating to adjust at times and get them to just the right tightness. But my comment was, if you look at my previous video, the tarp adjusters on that tarp are far superior. They are attached to the tarp itself, the line runs through them, and you pull on the line and you adjust at the tarp, not at the tent stake. So I think that is a much better setup to have. So honestly, I just removed all of these lines, and as you saw earlier, I put on my own lines, and I'm just using a taut line hitch or a Marlin spike hit uh, knot and to, to run my stake through whatever it works. Or in one case, as you saw, I have it tied off to the tree because there are trees available to me to do that, and it does allow me to get a little bit more height out of it. So what am I saying about the tarp? It, the tarp is probably, I can't say for sure because I haven't had it long enough, probably of as good quality. Is it lighter? By a couple of ounces, yes, I'll accept that. It's about the same size. You're only going to get the coverage you really need with this hammock if you use it in diamond formation so it's not a real big tarp. Uh, you may choose to uh, change out your tarp at some point. The smell, that'll go away over time, I guess. Other than that, the whole package works. 
it works well together with the modifications I made. Again, you may not see the need to make these modifications, but I just wanted to show you what it came with, what my thoughts are on each of those things. All right, let's wrap this video up. All right, just before we go to the closeout, I thought I would show you the hammock and tarp in their bag. So if I didn't mention, the hammock itself has an integrated stuff sack midpoint on one side of the, of the hammock itself. And of course, it's sewn to the side of the hammock, and that's what you stuff the hammock back inside of. Now, uh, it does have a compression strap on it, but to be honest... I, it, I think the strap is pretty much useless. There's not a whole lot you can do with that strap. It, it quite often doesn't stay in place. It wants to slide off one side or the other. And the bag is barely big enough to get the hammock back inside. You know, and for me, that's, that's a bit of a common complaint. If, uh, especially right now, I'm working with uh, fingerless gloves on right now to put this away if your hands are at all cold. Uh, it's a little bit of a, of a struggle to get this back into the bag. And... The tree straps aren't in here. I've still got them hanging on the trees. I actually have a separate bag for carrying my tree straps and some of the other components around in because I just find it too much for this stuff sack. So uh, my thoughts on the stuff sack, it works, but you're gonna end up leaving the tree straps out. Now maybe you can get it all in, but honestly, there's barely enough room for the hammock in here. And again, the compression strap, I'm probably gonna cut it off because I don't think it does uh, anything, but I'll just give you a quick once over. There is the East Hills Outdoor Jungle Explorer. Uh, what did I get? I got the red and the gray. Nice, you know, nice colors. Nothing wrong with those. They have a couple of color options as well. And here's the tarp back in its sack. Uh, that's, again, as I mentioned, one of my gripes is quite often tarps, and even good quality tarps will come with less than ideal bags. The bags look great when they first arrive because everything is flat and, you know, compressed into shape. But unless you take the time to do that before putting it back in, if you're like a lot of people, me included, a lot of the time, especially if it's wet and I just want to get moving, is you just stuff them. Hence the name stuff sack, of course. If you start stuffing them, they're much harder to get into that bag. This one's not bad. This is actually a better than a lot of them. As you can see, there's still a little bit of slack in here. And this is literally just stuffed in, not folded. So it works pretty good. And my tent stakes are inside as well, as well as my guidelines. So I would say that this bag does come with enough room to put your, uh, your uh, tarp back inside. Possibly enough room to put the tree straps if you didn't want to uh, have a third bag like I have. Okay, now let's close out this video. All right, once again, this has been the East Hills Outdoors Jungle Explorer Double Hammock. A budget or entry-level hammock that will serve most people's needs, especially if they are occasional campers and are not looking for the ultralight, the best of hammock equipment. This is intended for people who are just getting into hammocks or, as I mentioned, do not see themselves needing all the high-end equipment that a lot of hammockers choose to go to eventually. It will give you everything you need to decide whether or not you want to get into hammock further. And as I mentioned in the opening, maybe this is all you'll ever need. So I haven't had this tent to give you or this hammock long enough to give you a long-term use review. I'll have it. Well, I'll have it. So next summer when it warms up again, enough to get out with a hammock, or at least until I get an underquilt that I can make sure that I feel warm enough in the winter, I will come back to you with a long-term use review on this hammock. And despite my misgivings about the tarp itself, it fits within the budget price of this hammock. So I guess I'm not disappointed from that standpoint. I was just expecting something of at least equal quality that came with the first East Hill outdoor hammock. Okay, as I mentioned before, I will put all the specifications and information where you can find this hammock in the video description below. I would invite you to get, leave any comment you might have about this hammock, especially if you own it and you have some experiences with it or any comments or questions that you want to me to answer about this hammock as best I can, please put those in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because of course, it will make all the difference. Bye for now.